Hello, and welcome to episode six. This would be the prisoner's favorite episode. In this particular episode, we are going to look at the symmetries of the perfect, perfect hexagon, which is a very important shape in chemistry, particularly in organic chemistry, uh, which revolves around uh, the chemistry of benzene, for example. So the first thing we want to do with our molecule, again, is to find the high order rotation axis. So this is the uh, perfect hexagon here, and we can build our model. You put our reference hexagon at the bottom there, and then we'll put our molecule right on top, and we can use our push pin to simulate a possible high order rotation axis. And there we go. And we'll notice that with the hexagon, something like benzene, we can assume that each of these pink uh, circles is a hydrogen atom. If we rotate by a sixth of a turn, so in this case we're rotating by 60 degrees, or uh, two-thirds pi, uh, we notice that the substituents line up exactly, and we notice that if we do it in the clockwise direction, they line up also. So this tells us not only is C6 a symmetry operation of the group, but C6 to the minus one is also a symmetry operation of the group. If we go back to where we started from, we might try to use one of our tricks from before and to do our C6 rotation twice in a row. And let's see if that, that works. So we have one C6, and we follow it by two, a second C6. And we notice, so this, all these substituents line up. So this tells us that C6 squared is a symmetry operation of the group. We might also recognize this as if we had done an immediate C3 turn. So if you look in the character tables for D6H, which is the point group of the hexagon of benzene, you'll notice that there is a C3 operation that's listed there. So we can also think of that as C6 squared, for example. And then by the same token, we can go in the opposite direction clockwise. Two C6 operations, and we have effectively done a C3 minus one. So the hexagon has a very large number of rotational axes that are perpendicular to the plane of the molecule. We have just seen that we have C6, we have C3, we have C3 to minus 1, C6 to minus 1. So if we can do a C6 operation once or twice, maybe we can do it three times. Let's see. One, two, and here we go three. So we see that if we do three C6 operations in a row, uh, that we do have a symmetry operation of the group because all the substituents essentially go back to where they were before. Uh, it looks like we haven't changed the molecule at all. Another way to say it mathematically is that the molecule is invariant to a rotation of 180 degrees AC2. So for the hexagon, it's a special molecule. It has C2, C3, and C6. Um, for your own uh, edification, you can try to do C4 and C5 rotations. If you do those, you'll see that they don't line up. So therefore, C4 and C5 are not operations of the group D6H. So we can look, let's look at the mirrors for a while. So again, because we have a planar molecule, we know that we always, always, always have a plane that goes in the same plane as the plane of the molecule. And in this case, this particular plane is perpendicular to the high order rotation axis. Since we have C2, C3, and C6 rotations, C6 trumps C3 and C2 because 6 is bigger than 3 and 6 is bigger than 2. So our high order rotation axis for benzene is a C6. And the plane of the molecule is an, through which there is a mirror plane is perpendicular to that high order rotation axis. That makes the mirror plane through the plane of the molecule a horizontal mirror. So we see that this molecule has a horizontal mirror. Curiously enough, it also has both vertical and dihedral mirrors. So let's take a look at those and see if we can find any of them. Well, first of all, if we fold the molecule in half through two of the hydrogen atoms like this, we see from the side that all the atoms line up. They're all pinks. They're all hydrogens. So therefore, we have a mirror plane going right along this line here. And since the mirror plane goes through two atoms, we call this a vertical mirror. 
And let's see if we can show this with a mirror that is a vertical mirror. And if we put it right about there. There we go. There you go. We can, we can kind of see the mirror plane right there. So we do see that it really does have a mirror plane, even if we use a mirror. And because there are three of these types of lines that go through exactly two atoms in the center, there will be three sigma v's, three vertical mirrors for benzene. Now let's try the banal line that goes through the center but through the midpoint of each side. So let's try one of those. Now if we fold it over like this, we see that we have three pairs of atoms that all line up perfectly. This tells us that this is a mirror plane, is a symmetry operation of the group. Because it goes between the atoms and not through them, we call this a dihedral mirror in this case. So sigma d is a dihedral mirror, and there are three more of these. And there's three total in the, in the molecule. And again, let's see if we can use a mirror to show that we really do have such a mirror plane. So here's our mirror. And the angle here is a little challenging, but we can do that. I can almost do that. There we go. Had a little trouble getting in that, but if you try it with your mirror enough, you actually will see, ah, uh, there we go. That's the other one. But if we try it enough, you'll see that we do have a mirror plane that goes through there. Now, there's one additional symmetry operation for D6H. It has inversion, which we will demonstrate later on. But we had mentioned with uh, D2H and D4H, which are other molecules for which there is a center of inversion. And we had mentioned in the previous episode that we can use spectroscopy to tell very easily just using IR and Raman spectroscopy whether a molecule is center symmetric or not. So we can break the entire world of molecules into two classes easily, the class of things that are center symmetric and the things that are not center symmetric. Now, because we have six different possible substituent locations, we can derive a very large number of substituted molecules for benzenes. So let's take a look at another example of those. So one of these possible cases is if we have substitutions at the 1, 3, and 5 positions. So let's turn it like this. We'll call this the 1 position, the 3, and 5. So this might represent a molecule such as 1, 3, 5 trichlorobenzene. So we'd like to see what the symmetry operations of this particular molecule are going to be. We can put our push pin in to simulate our high order rotation axis. It is perpendicular to the plane of the molecule. If we try to rotate by a C6 here, let's see what we get when we do that. We see that in every case, the atoms change. In each case, a green turns into a pink, and a pink turns into a green. So this tells us that this particular molecule has no uh, C6 operation. But if we start in this position, and we go by a C3rd, so we do a third of a turn. Ah, we see that all the atoms line up. So we no longer have C6, but we do have C3s. And this particular molecule, as we'll see, has C3, C3 to the minus one. And in fact, it bears a very strong resemblance. If you kind of imagine lines connecting the like atoms, it looks like a triangle. In the same way, connecting the pinks, we have also another triangle. So uh, we might conclude from this and our previous experience that this would be D3H and we'd be exactly right. So we have several ways of achieving a D3H type molecule. One way is by having an equilateral triangle and three identical substituents. Or we can have a 135 tri-substituted benzene, for example which will also have exactly the same symmetry of D3H.